Hey everyone, uh, it's been a while, but I really wanted to do an update on some of my plants and also do another tour of the bedroom. Uh, there are quite a few changes, so stay tuned. Over here we have my Sansevieria cylindrica. It has some new growth and the existing stalks have gotten quite long. And then, if you remember from my plant swap video, this is the date palm that I got. It took a while, but it finally is getting one new leaf here. Okay, and I just repot it into this planter that I made. It's pretty cool. Then, of course, we have my Euphorbia trigona which has grown significantly since the last video. Um, I know it's hard to tell scale, but so from here to the top is all the new growth that has happened since the last video. I would say it's about 10 inches of new growth. And then on the lowest stalk, instead of growing up, it split into three branches so that's really cool and they're starting to get the triangular shape here it's supposed to just flat so a lot of you have commented about updating about this monster and Sony eye um, just a long story short after I repotted it it did not thrive it wasn't growing at all really so I actually took it out of the pot and I basically <laughs> I made about 50 cuttings of it and I later repotted those cuttings so this is just one out of four plants that I created from that bigger plant but as you can see there is still a lot of yellowing leaves I'm gonna see if that's just from the cuttings after they root and produce new growth, they tend to do, die back like that. So I'm hoping that's all it is. But some of the other plants are not doing quite as well. They're more yellow, even the new growth. So I think uh, whatever pest it had uh, was worse than I thought. Um, but this one is doing pretty well. Actually, all these vines right here are new growth, as you can tell by the smaller leaves. Okay, so that's the update on the Monster Ad and Sony Eye that I got from Chinatown. <laughs> Make sure you check your, your plants before you buy them for pests. Um, over here is actually a very sad story. This is one of the first plants I ever had. It was just an anthurium from a grocery store that my boyfriend got me for our first Valentine's Day. Um, and it was doing so well. It lasted about three years. One year it had about 10 blooms on it. Um, and then right after that, it just started dying back. Um, you can see I've had to cut everything off. Um, these were the only relatively healthy leaves left. But as you can see, they're not exactly healthy. Um, the underside of them, so that is from some sort of pest. I want to say thrips, but I'm not sure. It's not spider mites because I haven't seen any webbing. Um, it's not mealy, uh, mealy bugs either. It's something that's sucking the, the juice out of the leaves to a point where a plant that was in like a 12 inch pot is now reduced to three leaves. Um, my only hope is that I am getting some new growth there so all these little baby leaves are new so we'll just have to see but I repotted this about four times since I saw it getting sick and nothing has seemed to help I've completely cleaned the roots and the leaves with detergent nothing helped um, but I'll keep you guys updated on that over here we have my fiddle leaf fig um, it just produced three new leaves. The, the new leaves haven't fully grown, um, so I'm a little confused by that. 
because the last couple leaves before that, when they grew, they would grow to full size and then darken. These kind of stayed small and then darkened. Um, and a couple of the bottom leaves have died back since then. But I think it's okay. It looks healthy enough. Over here, I have a, an anthurium. This was in my birthday haul video. Going okay. It's uh, growing pretty slowly. Here's a new leaf though, and another new leaf. Yeah, it's real slow growing, but it's all right. Um, over here we have my ficus audrey, which I found had a really bad scale infestation. Uh, so I got rid of that just a couple of weeks ago, and I've removed a couple of yellow leaves. Uh, unfortunately, I have not <laughs> seen any new growth, which concerns me a lot, <clears throat> considering I've had it for three or four months. So I don't know if these are just extremely slow growers, but these uh, have not produced any new leaves since I've gotten it. Um, that could have been from the scale that was on it, um, so I'm hoping, I don't know, maybe now that the scale's gone it'll be healthier, happier, but <clears throat> still haven't seen any new growth, so we'll see if anyone has anything to, uh, any advice for me on that, please let me know. Next we have my Peperomia obtusifolia, which is huge, I got it when it was quite little. Um, it's very happy. It's such an easy grower. Um, I've moved it around the house quite a bit, but it never seems to be bothered by that. Um, yeah, very great plant. If you are not very good at plants, I suggest getting this one. Um, next, a little happier story since I just showed you a bunch of plants that were not doing so well. So this is pink syngonium. I bought it years ago, it's one of my first plants, and I always had an issue with it not unfurling, so the leaves would be closed like this and never open. So the plant was actually huge, it was like in a big pot, and the, the stems of the leaves were very long. So for example this one's a little longer, the other ones were like even longer but none of the leaves would unfurl. Um, so after a year or so of like struggling with it and wondering what was wrong with it, I decided to just basically cut up the whole plant and remove all the roots and try to re-root it in water, which I did. Um, and now, I think 85% of these leaves are new and they are all opening and their color is very bright. So I think the roots were just super unhealthy, um, so I'm glad I was able to save this since it's one of my first plants. So nice. Here we just have a pilea cutting and it is rooting, I actually just cut it today so it has no roots on it, but it's rooting in this water with a marimo moss ball, or marimo moss ball. And same over here, this is actually the first plant I ever saved, it was in a Chinese dollar store. <laughs> it was a bamboo, uh, it looked like it was dying, but now it's super healthy and it's just in there with a moss ball as well. Okay, up here we have uh, one of my favorite plants ever is my Gollum Jade, it's doing really well. Um, it's hard to tell what new growth it gets, but it is growing. Um, and the trunks are getting really nice and woody and thick. So I love that. Next to that is the Haworthia that I got for my birthday. That one hasn't changed much. Uh, it has maybe three or four new stalks in the middle there. Next is the Euphorbia uh, Briar Patch that I got at Home Depot. This has grown quite a bit. Um, super interesting plant. I know it's hard to see. There you go. Really interesting plant. I really love euphorbias. 
Okay, next to that is a new addition that has not been in any videos. This is a Stefania Recta. Um, I got this from Etsy. Uh, I'll leave a link. These have become pretty popular and they're pretty hard to come by. Um, they take a couple of weeks to produce any growth, so when you get it in the mail it actually looks just like a potato. <laughs> um, has no roots whatsoever, it's just this like trunk caudex thing. And then over time, now I have some growth and hopefully it will have some leaves as well. So there's that. Really interesting plant. Um, next to that is from the plant swap, the alocasia. So this one is strange. Um, it started off with three leaves from the plant swap and then it suddenly shot out three more leaves and then three of the old leaves completely died right away and I thought the whole plant was gonna die but now it just produced three more new leaves so I think it's stabilized now um, and this new leaf is quite big so it's happy um, yeah still don't know the exact species of this plant next to that is also from the plant swap it's my Monstera Deliciosa. Uh, this started with two leaves, so this is an older leaf, the original cutting. And look at the monstrous leaf that came out, and this one's even bigger, it just bloomed. It has a little hole in it, but it's healthy besides that. Yeah, so I'm happy about that, because for a while I wasn't sure if they would make it. The leaves were super droopy. Okay, over here we have a pepperomi or pepper spot. Um, really love the look at, of this plant. It has these adorable, kind of looks like a Pilea peperomoides leaf, uh, just little round discs, except it has it trails. And this has grown so, so much since the last video. Um, however, the leaves keep dropping off, and I'm not sure why. Uh, I'm gonna wait till it really s doesn't look well to check the roots um, because it is still growing it's just every day a bunch of leaves drop off so I'm not sure what's going on with that if anyone has advice um, and then th just this my mom's uh, pilea I've taken all the big cuttings from it now so it's just the very small babies um, I've given away maybe three or four plants from this one, but yeah, now it's just these center little pups. And next to that is my monster at Insoniae that I got as a cutting <clears throat> from one of my favorite plant shops. It started off with just four leaf cuttings and now they are full grown. I think one of them didn't root so now I have three vines but I'm so proud of that because it was uh, <clears throat> took a while to root. Um, next to that I have my Scandapsis pictus. Uh, it had produced four very long vines but it was not growing any bigger so I actually cut those vines, rooted them in water, and then repotted them into the dirt. Um, and those seem to be doing better. Um, I'm just waiting for the leaves to kind of grow more because right now they're all about this size. Okay, my favorite shelf. My cactuses, cacti, and succulents. Um, I'm going to try to get through these quickly. I know there's a lot. So back there is my Echeveria Purple Pearl. Um, you can't see the top of it very well. There it is. Okay. Next to that I have two cacti. So I know they look super droopy. Um, I attribute that to the one on the right for example. I saved that and it was very malnourished, um, almost died, 
So I think now that it's healthy, the top of it is growing at a faster rate, so it's kind of drooping from the weight of all that new growth. Um, the other one, similar situation, I think. It's just a little top heavy. But also what I notice is that just like any other plant, it grows towards the sun. So I forgot to rotate them for about a week, so now they're more bent than normal. But eventually they will straighten up because I've turned them. Next to that is a Kalanchoe. <laughs> Fuzzy Kalanchoe panda bear, I think. Um, I'll get a better shot. There's the Kalanchoe and the two cacti. And the Echeveria. Then, next to that is the other type of jade I have with these, like, teardrop leaves. Um, then I have my Haworthia. Sabrina my cactus that I've had for a couple of years now. Um, really sad. <laughs> Today I came home, I haven't been home for like four days, and I found the other cactus. I had another round cactus that I've had just as long as this one, but I didn't realize it was rotting. <laughs> um, and today I came home and it was just completely deflated in its pot. Um, so that's really sad. But I still have this one, so I'm going to make sure not to overwater it. Um, I think the last one was rotting for a while, and I just didn't notice um, the signs. It's kind of hard to tell when a cactus is rotting. Um, the one next to it is brand new. I got it when I was in California recently um, from the Berkeley Nursery. Super cool cactus. I mean... It's like unreal. Super cool. Um, next to that is a cactus I've had for a very long time. Um, this part right here that looks like a heart is new from this season, from the summer. Um, normally it would shoot off even more uh, pups, I guess, or new growth, but that's been the only one this year. Maybe I'll get more by the end of the summer. Over here, I have a Kalanchoe. I think this is new to everyone. This is a Kalanchoe that my mom saved from her office. It's actually really cool. Sorry, it's not focusing. But it has these, like, kind of, like, tiger stripes on the back of the leaves. And you can see it has the typical um, jagged edge of Kalanchoes with the baby growing out of it. So, yeah. And I have that in a handmade pot. Next that's another cactus I got from California on the same trip. Um, super cool. Also in a handmade pot that I made. Just a really beautiful specimen of the cactus. Over here we have the Haworthia cooperi. I still don't know how to say it. Um, in another planter that I made. <laughs> um, it's doing well. Some new growth. Such a cool plant. Over here, this I bought maybe two hours ago. <laughs> so I came home, found my dead cactus, and then uh, went to Home Depot to buy some like hooks for my clothes, like some command strip hooks. Um, and then obviously I went to check out the plants, didn't expect to get anything. But this one was just so interesting, um, and it was the only one there, so I got it kind of to replace the one that I lost. Um, but look how cool that is. I really like finding unique um, spines on cacti and unique growth. So cool. Speaking of which, uh, the other one I got in California is this guy. Uh, it's funny, it's only been two weeks since I came home with it, but this, like, dome cone shape is all new growth because when I brought it home, it was just a perfectly round 
cactus. So all of that is new growth. But I just love these spines. How they're super long. So I had to get it. Bring it home. Um, also in a handmade planter. Sorry. Made a lot of planters. <laughs> Here's my Ming Thing cactus. Still a favorite. I believe it's the same genus as this one over here. It has the same growth pattern. Um, I have to figure out what genus that is to let you guys know. But yeah, it's very similar. Uh, it's really hard to tell when these are growing. They just don't look... The new growth is like impossible to see because it's just so complex. Um, but I think it has grown. Finally, the last new plant I got from California is this Euphorbia. Um, so cool. Also in a handmade planter. I love Euphorbias. This one is just so cool. Not much I can say besides that. Can't wait for it to get bigger. Then, of course, my Ripsalis. Oops. Dancing bottles. You see the growth better there. It's getting there. Next is my uh, plant swap arrangement. I transported it into this other cup that I made. Um, we have the Peperomia prostrata there. And then a really cool type of Ripsalis that it finally took root and has new growth. You can see that little shorter piece is new. And then this um, Crassula did not root, but it's like alive. It's just like in the dirt standing, but it didn't take root. I didn't see any roots when I repotted it. Finally on this shelf, I have this Chinese evergreen cutting that I saved. Um, it started with two leaves, this being one of the original leaves. And now it has one, two, three. Seven leaves and it's sending out a new shoot right there and then this leaf is not part of the plant that's a separate that's a separate plant this is a Hoya a snowcap Hoya um, I had a larger plant it didn't make it but I randomly put one of the pieces of the plant in this pot for whatever reason and actually it rooted and it has these two new leaves. This is my mom's plant. It's doing okay. I had spider mites but I think I got rid of them. And in here, since this pot is so large, I like to just put random pieces of plant in here. So we have some echeveria leaves, some... it's a dead leaf. Um, some ripsalis. And then I actually planted some lychee seeds, and this is a lychee plant. Pretty cool, so is this one. Super exciting. Okay, up here we have my monster pilea. I've been wanting to update people on this forever because look at this leaf. It's like the size of my hand, and like compared to how big the leaves used to be, you see the size difference? It's insane. That's all on the same plant. Like, crazy. So it's doing pretty well. Um, something I wanted to update you guys on too, since this is the first summer I've been in this room. It's extremely hot and I think a lot of my plants got stressed out uh, with the recent heat wave. Where it was like 100 degrees. Um, so the pilea, I think does not like to be that hot. It's not, it doesn't get direct sun, don't worry. <laughs> but even without the direct sunlight, um, I think it's just too hot, so it's sagging a lot, even though I watered it. Um, and that's true of some other plants, they just look stressed out. Um, but not this one, this is the Dracaena, Janet Craig Compacta. This has grown quite a bit. Then I have the Hoya, hmm, wow, I forgot the name of this Hoya, but it's doing better. Yeah, if you look in the last video, it looks like it's completely dead, but it has new growth here, so that's good. 
Down here is another sad story. This is literally one of my favorite plants that I own. It's the Ripsalis bossifera. Um, today I came in. Again, I think this is from the heat, not from the direct sunlight. It doesn't get direct sunlight because it's a jungle cactus. It just gets bright and direct light. But I came home and all the older growth that used to be very bushy in the center here, it had all just like fallen off. Luckily this newer growth, which is totally different looking than the old growth, used to grow in these little bunches. It's hard to explain. Um, but you could kind of see. So that's the, the growth I'm used to. So all this like kind of stockier growth. It's longer and also kind of more stemmy. That's how it's been growing recently and that growth is fine. So I'm wondering if this is like a natural life cycle it goes through. If anyone knows, let me know. So I'm, I'm not sure how it's doing. Can't tell if it's dying or growing. Um, so we'll see. Next to that is my Cryptanthus, which in the last video was this color. And look at the color it turned into. The fuchsia. And it's so funny, I don't know why three of the leaves haven't turned pink. Um, but the rest of it has, and it's so beautiful. You guys should really look into getting one of these. It's called an Earth Star, commonly. Um, it's just so pretty, so low maintenance. It's slow grower, but that's fine. Over here we have my string of pearls. So this is another plant that has been really stressed out by the heat. Um, even though it's growing, there is some dying back, and the pearls are not as dark green as they should be, um, in my opinion. They're more of a pale yellow green, um, and I think that's it stressed out. But yeah, I just gotta keep my eye on this and make sure there's nothing wrong with the roots. I'm hoping that once the weather cools down, it will look better and feel better. But yeah, it's grown quite a bit. Next to that is one of my favorite plants that I've saved. It's the ZZ plant. Um, this started with just two stalks and now there's about eight. And I just repotted this other ZZ that my friend gave me to save. Um, I know it looks horrible with the yellowing leaves, but this is a cutting from a completely dying plant and it actually rooted in water, so I just planted it up. Oop! New growth! Oh, and that's from the, the other... Oh, sweet. So this stalk that's producing a new, new growth right there, that's from the same plant that I saved. So this thing and this stalk come from the same saved plant, and now it's producing new growth. So happy. Um, but yeah, this was one of the more gratifying rescue plants I have because it really looked like it was going nowhere, but look how beautiful it is now. So awesome. Okay, um, on that back windowsill, again, my cactus with two really cool two pieces of growth there. Right? So cute. It's funny because they normally go around, but both of these produce these oblong shapes, which I think are so funny. So I'm happy for that because those were cuttings from that other cactus there. Um, and I wasn't sure if they would ever produce their own pups. Over here we have another Kalanchoe. It's a little teddy bear paw. Um, and then an aloe, some type of strange darker colored aloe that I'm saving, that I saved for my friend. Um, she had this and it was like completely dead and it somehow came back to life. Over here, some sort of bromeliad, still don't know the name of it. I got it from Josh's Frogs. Um, it had no roots for like months and months and then I finally rooted it in water. So now it's finally growing a little bit real slowly. Over here it's just uh, your typical jade plant. It's growing a lot. This started as just two leaves. So those two bottom leaves turn into this big plant. 
I'm just like eight months. Over here, my Peperomia rubella. So you can see the shape of it. Um, once it gets to a certain length, the branches kind of just lay down instead of standing up. It kind of makes me nervous because it looks like it's drooping and like sad, but in reality that's just how it grows. But it's still a really cool plant from Josh's Frogs. Next to that is my other Ripsalis, which thank god it's fine. Um, it's growing a ton. So you can see it's super happy. It's in one of my handmade pots um, and it has tons of new growth. So I'm really glad just in case my other Ripsalis dies I have this one. They're not the same species, I don't think, um, but it's pretty close. Alrighty, so there's my Madagascar palm here. This is doing well for a while. I was losing a ton of leaves almost every day. I moved it around to a bunch of different places in my room, and then I think I figured out it did not want any direct sunlight. So since I put it away from any direct sunlight, it's been doing better, and leaves haven't been turning yellow or falling off. Then over here is my Peperomia frerii. It's growing really fast, a little too fast for my liking. That's why I've been so into cactuses lately, because they're so slow. Um, I just am getting tired of repotting things. Um, over here it's just the cutting of a ficus tree, um, my bonsai, which I haven't shown. I'm going to have to go get it from the living room to show you guys, because it's one of my favorite plants that I have. Down here we just have the Philodendron Brazil uh, from the Plant Swap. It had it has produced maybe five or six new leaves since I got it. Um, it's doing all right. Can't complain. Over here we have my crispy wave fern, which is such an anomaly to me. It has not grown whatsoever, or it hasn't produced any new fronds. I think the most it's done is the existing fronds might have gotten larger. But it's such a slow grower, I really don't know what it wants from me. And then here we just have a stone crop that my friend gave me from around her house. This is also growing extremely fast, not sure. <laughs> I repotted it once already, but I wish I could plant it outside. Just thought I'd show you my air plant. Um, this one produced flowers the other month. So now you can see because it produced flowers it has one, two, yeah. It produced two new pups. So those are brand new pups because the plant flowered. So each one of these will eventually flower and then keep doing the same thing and then over time you'll get this huge like bunch which is what I'm looking forward to. So it lives right here in this little hanging pot that I made. All right, we're getting to the end. This is my humongous Tritoscantia zebrina plant. It's so beautiful, but I'm just like overwhelmed with how fast it grows. Um, in my last video, you can look at the last video, it was nowhere near this size. Um, and I've taken so many cuttings from it already and I just can't keep up with it, but <laughs> I'll enjoy it while it lasts. Um, before it starts dying back. But yeah, look how beautiful. It's pretty happy here. Then you can see my golden pothos over here. So I have two. The one on the left is the mother plant and that's its baby along with like 10 other baby plants I've made from it uh, that I've given away to friends. But it's insane what so I moved here in February, it is July now, and the leaves on this plant have gotten quite large. It got so happy from the amount of light it's getting now. So you can see this is an older plant, right? Uh, an older leaf. And you can see the size of the vine. Um, another older leaf. Very small. And then, this is a newer leaf. And you could see, right, because it's getting so much sun, the variation has gotten more and more pronounced. 
So you can see the older leaves are completely green. And then this the newer newer growth has all that variegation on it. Um, and it used to only come to about here, I think in the last video. So that all of this is kind of new. Um, and it didn't used to trail this far down. I'm gonna have to cut it back soon. It used to be about here. And now it's grown, I don't know, three feet at least. So I almost forgot, but this, I just wanted to show you a couple of plants that are in the rest of my house and not my bedroom. This is my ficus ginseng. It's like a bonsai. Look at this beautiful trunk it has. And I have some air plants in there. Um, I just love this plant. I'm not sure how I want to prune it, um, or if I will, but it's such a beautiful plant. Then I also have my Fetonia. I just want to update you guys on that because I had repotted it in one of the videos and it's doing really well. Um, I've actually come to love this plant, so I talked about giving it away, but I'm definitely keeping it. And finally, this is just some sort of succulent, I think some crassula maybe, that my mom saved from her office because everyone likes to buy plants and then kill them. So she keeps bringing some home. And I just love the way this thing grows. Look at this. This is one long, um, like, rope <laughs> of leaves. It's so cool. Um, and then this just has a bunch of babies growing from the stem. Yeah, I just think it's such a cool plant. I want to show everyone. I almost forgot to update you guys on the kangaroo poffering that I repotted quite a few videos ago. Um, but here it is. It's extremely happy. Um, it has so much new growth. There's new leaves coming out all the time. Yeah, turned out to be quite a hardy plant. So that's the kangaroo paw fern. You could kind of tell that it grew a lot, I think. <laughs> to me, at least, it looks bigger. And I also forgot about my air plants up here. So beautiful. They both grew quite a lot since the summer started. But that's it. Um, sorry about the noise in the background. I do live in Garfield, New Jersey, <laughs> where there's constantly buses and garbage trucks and people mowing their lawns. Um, but hopefully it's not that distracting. If you might have noticed, uh, some of the plants that were in my first tour were not in this one. That's because some of them are outside, uh, whichever ones can withstand that kind of temperature, mostly the two ivies I have, and then a crotus, and I have my peace lily outside as well, um, but yeah, so a couple of them are not in this tour, but they are outside. Um, they did get spider mites, that's another reason I took them out, um, kind of to quarantine them, and also because I figured spider mites are less likely to survive outside. Um, they're doing okay. Uh, it is a little too hot recently for all those plants, but I have them kind of in the shade of one of the bushes. Whew, that noise is annoying. This guy is literally, um, weed whacking a sidewalk. He's whacking weeds, but he's also just going onto the concrete <laughs> with that weed whacker. Um, I hear him just like whipping rocks around. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions about my plants or any advice about certain plants that um, I had trouble with. And 
yeah, that's about it. I'll see you guys next time. And of course now he stopped.